Okay, this is a third meeting of uh, uh, English for Environment within the European Erasmus Plus project Key Activity Free uh, School Plastic Free Movement. And what I said before, um, we will also send to all of you some information and if you want to join our movement and want to collaborate with us and this very important issue concerning the environment. So I give the word immediately uh, to our <laughs> lovely friend and Professor Gordon Kennedy. Thank you very much, Gordon. Okay. Th th thank you, Stefano. As I say, apologies again for the confusion. Afterwards, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that everything is uh, uh, is lined up in my calendar. So, okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, I hope everyone is uh, is okay. Um, this afternoon, we're going to actually start to <coughs> get into the the meat of the uh, of the of the topics, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about waste. Okay, now um, I'm going to start. Let's just see if this will. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to move move on today to talk about um, this idea of waste and, in particular, the idea of reduce, reuse, recycle and replace. Now um, this morning I was uh, I was at a school here in Verona and as we were leaving the school I noticed that the um, the bins which are uh, for collecting uh, different types of waste um, have had a rebranding let's say if you can rebrand a bin I'm not sure but there was um, there's now a huge logo on each bin which talks about reducing, reusing, and recycling, which I thought was uh, quite uh, quite apt considering that this is the topic that uh, I wanted to uh, discuss with you uh, this week. Um, I I was in the car and I was driving, so I couldn't stop to to take a photograph of it. But uh, I thought, well, okay, so finally this these ideas are starting to um, are starting to become uh, quite uh, mainstream now let me just see there is a uh, is the chat open I just want to open that up so I can see it okay right um, okay so waste waste so I'm going to start with a quote from a very famous book by uh, an English author from, I think it was the 1920s, 1930s, uh, Aldous Huxley, uh, who wrote the book The Bra Brave New World. And like so much, um, uh, let's say, look, so much fiction which is set in the future, um, but which is maybe not how you describe uh, a science fiction it um, it describe he describes a future he describes a world which is very um, in some ways it's actually very similar to the world in which we live and I think sometimes particularly uh, books like uh, Brave New World of course uh, George Orwell <laughs> will re raise his head as well um, but also the books of Ray Bradbury who is a science fiction author I think are particularly uh, worth reading these days um, because so much of what these people uh, had thought about as a let's say logical progression or logical um, development of society um, so much of it has actually well let's say come true or we recognize elements of it and amongst these I think this quote from Aldous Huxley is particularly pertinent uh, and particularly for us since we are talking about um, uh, we're talking about uh, waste so I do love flying well I don't think Aldous Huxley would have in his wildest dreams imagined Ryanair or EasyJet okay but uh, we have 
these things these days. I do I do love new clothes, and they whisper, but old clothes are beastly. We always throw away old clothes. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better than mending. Now, um, for those of you who don't know this particular uh, don't know this particular book. Um, this quote comes from a part where he talks about um, how how embryos are educated in the womb, but the womb, of course, is the uh, is a a synthetic factory type of situation, a bit like the Matrix, if you like. Okay, which is maybe not so nice, but. Um, but the idea is that there is this constant message, this constant message. Now, whether it's in the womb or whether it's on the Internet, whether it's just in everyday life, um, the whole point here is that um, it's better to be seen to be, um, to be wearing new things, to be doing new things, always new, always new, always fashion. Okay? So the idea is that um, this is very much let's say the throwaway the throwaway society which is something which i think we 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 recognize today okay so um in this particular section we are going to look at some different uh different types of um let's say different aspects of waste um, I'm going to throw some numbers at you, quite a lot of numbers, but the, the, the topic, the, the intent is not really to submerge you with, uh, with numbers. It's just to um, show how, uh, particularly when we are thinking about, uh, when we're thinking about waste, we need to have some sort of perspective on things. And unfortunately, the numbers are extremely scary. They're, they're big. Uh, they're, in fact, I think... If I asked anybody here, even myself, uh, what does two billion tons of municipal solid waste look like? I think we would be hard pushed to imagine how how much that is, because a billion is a very very big number. Um, even a ton of uh, even a ton of stuff is is quite. You have an idea that it's quite a lot, but exactly how much is it? Well, um, okay, so approximately these are very very approximate numbers uh, which you can find on uh, different websites FAO uh, ONU uh, sorry the the United Nations uh, the World Bank these are all places where you um, where you can get uh, get this data the European Commission is also a, a good uh, European Union websites are also a good um, uh, source of, of information okay so this averages out to around about 750 grams of waste per person per day. Now, of course, um, there's a big, big, big disparity because, of course, if we're talking about um, Western society, if we're talking about uh, developed countries, uh, we're obviously throwing away a lot more stuff than someone who is maybe struggling in Darfur or in Somalia okay but on average we're talking about uh, 750 grams Western countries it's over it's kilos okay on average um, so the other the other statistic here is high income countries so Western Europe North America 16% of the people but 34% of the waste so this gives us an idea of how things are not uh, particularly evenly spread. And I think one of the things which, one of the topics which we will, to, uh, we will touch on um, at a certain point is uh, the idea of uh, how in the environment uh, and looking after the environment or recovering the environment is very much associated with um, uh, it's very much associated with ideas of inequality as well so but we, we will come to that not today in a later in a later session so we've got um, uh, we've got a lot of waste being thrown away now this is uh, you can imagine that the data the numbers uh, become so big that 
well, if it's 468, if it's 475, or if it's 450, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because we're talking millions of tons. Okay, so we're talking huge numbers here. Um, this data is from about three years ago. It is actually quite difficult to get this data uh, on a regular basis and this is one of the things that organizations like the World Bank or like FAO or um, the United Nations, this is one of the types of things that they try and, uh, they try and do. So um, the question here is what do we throw away? and who is throwing it away okay so um, if you look at if you look at let's say what we're throwing away first of all um, <coughs> metal and glass which are the traditional materials um, uh, account for less than 10 percent altogether um, plastic is around about 12 to 15 percent cardboard is a bit more okay cardboard and paper so that's uh, remembering that cardboard and paper are wood uh, wood derived okay so we have um, uh, we have a lot of stuff uh, around uh, which is coming from um, uh, coming from cellulose sources and then we have food or green waste. Now, green waste is like typically like garden waste, that type of thing. Um, not obviously, not everyone has a garden, but let's say the the sorts of waste which can be uh, composted or which can be um, uh, which can be let's say broken down biologically. Okay, and notice that that is a huge. That's actually quite a big percentage. It's almost half. Okay, and this is where we come to the idea of uh, food waste, and uh, we will uh, we will have a quick look at that a little bit later. So, in terms of who is who is th throwing stuff away, well, we've got um, uh, we've got these uh, this graph here, these different numbers, but these numbers here don't don't really tell us exactly the whole story I think uh, I've got a graph on the next um, on the next slide which tells us a bit more but if we look so we're looking at East Asia uh, 450 470 million tons um, Europe and Central Asia uh, this is a rather strange grouping as a, as a geography uh, <laughs> I have to say but um, 390 400 million tons and so on and so forth down to uh, Middle East and North Africa which is relatively relatively small but I think what we need to do is we actually need to match these numbers to the population and at this point, uh, this this is something. This is how I spent my Saturday afternoon, actually, because I was so intrigued by the numbers that I just thought we have to have to look at this a little bit more. Um, okay, so what we have is we have two graphs or two two graphs, two data sets superimposed. What I've done is I've uh, I've used the percentage of um, I've used the percentage of the uh, either of the total world population or of the total waste produced. Okay, so the percent, the green is the waste waste produced, and the purple is the percentage of the population in the world. Okay, so I think at this point you can see, and I've highlighted these two in particular. Um, you can see that, considering the number of people, uh, Europe and particularly North America actually throw away a lot more per person. The thing with Asia uh, and the Pacific is that there are just a lot of people, okay? So you have numbers, you have uh, really big numbers, but the, the thing here is that um, the thing here is that the uh, there is a big imbalance, let's say, and in particular North America, uh, they throw away a lot of stuff compared to how many people there are. Um, in Europe, um, we're not doing so well either. Okay, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean is uh, it is also imbalanced, but it, it's not as uh, it's not as uh, noticeable as. Uh, 
these two, uh, essentially the the, um, the more industrialized, the more developed countries. Okay. So, um, so what we've got this idea that there is an imbalance. Uh, there's a lot of waste, and there is an imbalance in who is making it and what it is. Um, so, what? Oops, oh, I've got I've got a mouse which is uh, um, <laughs> which is being a little bit of a pain, being a little bit of a pain today. Okay, so um, where does this waste go? Well. Um, this again is from the World Bank, I think. It's a World Bank report again from 2018. Uh, the, I think the thing which immediately comes to mind or comes to, to light is this. 33% is just basically dumped. It's thrown away. But it's not thrown away in any particular managed way. It's just thrown away. It's like me taking the rubbish outside and say, oh, there's the road, just throw it on the road, okay? So it's, it's not controlled. But if you add to that, there is landfill, which is not particularly specified, <laughs> okay? So this may be uh, something which is, um, uh, everybody knows that you take your rubbish there and you throw it there, okay? So it's sort of control, it's sort of a landfill, sort of control, but it's not being uh, managed in any, uh, in a much, let's say, much uh, greater way. Okay, so um, if you look at this, uh, this orange one, this is controlled landfill. Now what controlled landfill means is that the site will have been um, will have been chosen and it will have been, um, let's say, built or used or developed to make sure that um, the, uh, to make sure that the, the water, uh, the leachate, which is the water, the percolating water which comes down when it rains, um, the, the idea here is that this will have been checked out so that it's not going to cause trouble with the water table, for example, because one of the, one of the problems is if you have unmanaged landfill, you can get uh, toxic leachate into the, um, into the water table, and that's where you start to get problems in the local uh, environment. I'm, tr I'm thinking, I have an idea uh, of something that I remember from the 1970s, but it may actually have been a chemical dump, but uh, this was Love Canal in uh, North America. Uh, I think it's, in, uh, it's near Canada. Um, and this was a big, uh, a big problem. It was one of the, one of the things which, uh, one of the situations which pushed, um, uh, push the formation of the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, we've got about 8%. Now, sanitary landfill, what does this mean? Notice it says landfill with gas collection. We'll see this a little bit later. Um, because what happens when you, uh, when you start to throw stuff away, which contains all sorts of different things, um, bacteria will um, or can act on the materials and once they start fermenting uh, materials or once they start metabolizing I should say the materials uh, according to the types of bacteria you've got you you will have different products and you will have a mixture so it will be like a zoo basically but according to the conditions you may have let's say more elephants than tigers <laughs> yeah so um, the 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 thing here is that in some cases you produce gas, you produce biogas, and you can actually collect it. Um, but to in, to be able to do this, you need to manage the stuff. Um, a small amount of composting, uh, a small well, relatively small amount of recycling, um, and well, other whatever other is. There is some incineration, about 10% of incineration. Now, incineration is one of those um, extremely emotive uh, 
extremely emotive um, subjects, topics. Um, again, as I was coming back from the school this morning, um, I went past a, uh, it was like a, a poster, which was um, protesting against the building of, a, of an incinerator. Um, well, actually, the incinerator has been built. It's just that it hasn't been switched on, and there's a big debate. This is here in our city. There's a big debate about how uh, how it should be managed. Um, and of course, th the problem here is that uh, any facility has to be built somewhere, and it's always going to be in someone, as they say, someone's backyard. Uh, so uh, you have a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, let's say uh, debate about these things and also where you have stupid situations for example um, where um, Rome sends its waste to Naples to burn but Naples sends its waste to Germany to burn this is, there are just really quite, uh, it's, it's quite a complex system, okay? So anyway, um, okay, so uh, I'm just going to uh, sort of move on a little bit. So we've got this idea that stuff is being thrown away, it's going into, uh, it's going into landfill, it's going into waste in some way, um, but how long does it actually hang around? So I, I don't know, you must have seen, I think everyone has seen the, the time-lapse pictures of the, uh, of the apples or the, the bananas which are rotting and they, they disappear over time. It's quite good, uh, quite good fun, good photography to see. Um, but you have the idea, well, something like an apple core will degrade. It's biological and something will eat it. Uh, but what about a paper towel? Or what about a newspaper? Um, what about um, a waxed carton for milk? What about a piece of plywood? Or what about wool? What about cigarettes? No, cigarette butts, these are the filters. The, the paper and the tobacco will degrade fairly quickly. But these guys, these are terrible. Um, and given the number of people who, are, who, who still smoke, uh, a lot of people still smoke, uh, and given the number of people who smoke quite a bit during the day, the total production <laughs> of this type of thing can be of these uh, of the cigarette butts can be really quite uh, quite uh, scary as a as a number. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of cellulose type material. Okay, but what about uh, the more let's say the more technological stuff? Well, you have plastic bags, um, you, have, uh, uh, you, have the, um, you have plastic films, you have tin cans. Now, tin can, now the thing with tin can is uh, tin cans are um, made of steel or aluminium. Okay, we've got aluminium cans now. Um, if you don't do anything to these, they will just stay there for quite a while, okay? Um, but just as we find artifacts from, uh, metal artifacts from the, um, from the Middle Ages, uh, sometimes here, uh, sometimes you find uh, artifacts from the Vikings or from the Romans or whoever, um, and yeah, it's nice because it, you, you get the idea of how these people, uh, how these people lived. This gives you an idea that Things that are made will will hang around in the environment. Okay, um, of course, if you're talking about Campbell's soup soup cans like Andy Warhol, um, you may not want soup cans hanging around in the environment. So let's um, let, let, so so the thing here is that this type of rubbish or this type of waste can be very easily recycled. Um, aluminium is 100% recyclable simply because the, let's say, the energy which is being used to extract it, most of it, let's say it's already been spent, 
you've, you, it's like you have a certain amount of energy that you, you can use and the energy has already been used to get the stuff out of the rock. Um, once you start recycling it, um, uh, it's not a it's not a cheap energetic process but it's a lot more efficient okay same thing for tin cans um, rubber which is a natural material but it still takes time to degrade uh, styrofoam which is a totally unnatural material someone's just here just put on the uh, on the chat uh, the million millions of disposable face masks well yes yeah absolutely um, so you know this is these are things which we really have to have to watch um, now plastic beverage bottle this is typically PET polyethylene ter terephthalate um, which is a, a fun let's say it's a fantastic material for its properties in terms of you can use it for contains you can use it for all sorts of stuff however it has this rather bad property that it hangs around a lot um, so you have you, you have different and different types of plastic different types of, uh, of materials have different uh, lengths of time that they will live in the environment a glass bottle well glass is sand and sand is just silica it's uh, SiO2 it's silicon dioxide so um, glass is going to hang around for a long long time because it's essentially a rock if you like it's a type of mineral so um, these this gives you the idea of uh, this gives you the the idea of how um, how much stuff and how long this stuff can hang around um, I think it was it's been calculated that uh, if we keep going on producing the amount of waste that we produce uh, we will be submerged um, within uh, within about 50 years there won't be uh, there won't be any place on the, on the earth that does not have waste okay so um, coming to again coming to some sort of broader uh, broader issues or broader points about the um, about the waste itself we've got um, 90% of waste in lower income countries is mismanaged. Well, let's just think about this. Uh, you know, in countries which maybe are a bit more unstable, uh, maybe a little bit, uh, uh, there's not a lot of money around, people have other things to think about. Um, but of course, the problem here is that this will uh, increase um, risks associated with um, uh, associated with this waste so whether that is uh, uh, landfills as a, uh, a place where you may have rotting stuff which is uh, potentially cause could potentially cause disease or materials which are leaching into the into the water table okay um, now these are figures, as I say, these are figures from the World Bank and it's actually very difficult to get these numbers. Um, but around about a fifth of a council budget, a municipal budget in a, a low-income country um, can can be dedicated to uh, waste management. Okay, so uh, there's not, these guys don't have a lot of money to start off with. <laughs> So uh, they, they really don't have a uh, they don't really don't have a lot of resources to be able to deal with uh, uh, to, to be able to deal with the problem. And as said before, around about a third, 33% uh, is just dumped. That's not even unmanaged landfill. It's just thrown at the side of a road. Okay, so um, taking taking a sort of a more holistic uh, a, a, a broader systemic view of things um, and we will come back to this every so often during our our sessions um, we are actually faced with a complex system and one one of the I think one of the problems with complex complex system complex systems, uh, apart from the fact that they are indeterminate, which that means they're not like 
it's not like a physical uh, a physical system where you do a calculation, you get a number, and you know that's the result. Um, these things are in constant, uh, let's say, constant evolution, constant movement, constant change, um, and also, uh, in particular, this is a human system. It's uh, it could be classed as a hu what what's called a human activity system, uh, which is a socio-technical system. In other words, you have uh, society, you have people and technology and a whole, there's a whole sort of uh, mishmash of, of stuff which makes for extremely complex, uh, complex situations. And of course, part of that is, well, where there are people, there are politics and uh, what people um, what people believe, what people don't believe, what people will um, do about numbers, do about data. I don't want to imagine how that, okay. Uh, what people will do about data, whether they will ignore it, whether they will act on it, whether they are being uh, mature, whether they're just being stupid, because pe people can be stupid, of course. So we have multiple stakeholders, of course. Uh, we have governments. Um, or the political system, let's say we have the economic system represented by manuf manufacturing or um, a productive, the productive part of society. We have um, institutions, broader institutions such as uh, the education system, um, which of course ha has a role in this. Um, we've got uh, businesses which are maybe not productive, but which are in terms of actually physically making things, but uh, offering uh, services, offering um, uh, technologies. So, uh, and then we've got private. You've got private citizens who may or may not be organised in uh, in different uh, in different ways, um, down to the individual. <coughs> okay, so. We've got all of these, all of these elements coming together, and <coughs> the 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 part of the uh, part of the problem uh, around waste uh, around waste is that there are lots. Well, there are different levels of uh, of this um, from the individual level, um, which is you and me. Throw it, using stuff, buying stuff, throwing stuff away, to much broader, uh, the much higher levels of um, businesses engaging in unsustainable, uh, unsustainable activities, uh, governments supporting uh, economic activities which are definitely not good for the environment. So I'm thinking about Australia, for example. Not only, but I, I'm picking on the Australians because I know there aren't any here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, no, uh, I, seriously, the, it's clear that um, governments make decisions based on uh, what they think is good for the, uh, for the economy or for the people. But we have to look, also look at broader, uh, the broader system here. Okay, so <clears throat> if anything, it's clear that we need to change. Um, we need to reduce the amount of waste that we are producing. Um, and we need, to, we need to accept that it's not someone else's problem, it's our problem. It's my problem, it's Stefano's problem, it's your problem. Um, and it's this idea of... Um, changing our attitudes, changing our behaviours. And for many people, change is, is difficult. For some people, uh, and particularly if this change, if these changes uh, involve having to maybe spend more on particular items rather than others, there can be economic consequences which maybe they can't support. Uh, so this is all, um, it's all part of the mix of the complexity of this, uh, this problem. So um, as citizens, we have to maybe accept that uh, we shouldn't be buying so much stuff and consuming so much stuff. Um, going back to Aldous Huxley, 
as uh, as decision makers, um, we need to be thinking about how um, how legislation or incentives can help in order to um, go towards or move towards a sustainable uh, sustainable world, sustainable consumption, and cons uh, sustainable um, cycling. Of, uh, of resources and materials, but of course, we also have to. We cannot ignore the fact that the the main model for the world economy is uh, is based on profit, and there is very strong interest in maintaining um, certain directions. Let's say so. That's why I said lobbying, because it's clear that it, it it's there. Uh, it happens everywhere and so um, this has to be recognized also this is also part of the system okay so um, uh, a word from well a couple of words from two people this guy you almost certainly have never heard of um, but he was a um, he was a social commentator in the United States in the early 20, uh, 20th century but he did have this fantastic quote and I uh, since I spent time um, studying uh, systems, uh, I thought this was just so apt because um, it's so true. For every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. <laughs> okay, now it sounds a bit facetious, but it's actually there is a reason for this because from complex system theory tells us that you cannot manage. A complex system at a level of complexity which is lower than the system itself in other words you need to you need to recognize the the, the complexity of the system and so uh, Albert Einstein who you have heard of um, he uh, he came he, he he said this which which is that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking uh, that we used uh, when we created these problems, okay, and so this is this is the this is the crux of the matter that um, based on uh, based on the trajectory, the historical trajectory of the um, of our societies where we have gone towards consumption and uh, where we consume and throw away, we consume and we throw away. Um, we need to have a step change in uh, how we look at this because we cannot keep going in this direction and we need we need um, we need let's say uh, more sophisticated and more subtle ways of dealing with these uh, with this problem than uh, simply coming up with the next technological solutions because and again this is something that we will look at will technology save us well yes and no <laughs> okay so uh, it, it's part of the complexity of the thing okay so having said that uh, okay right this could be a uh, Okay, right. I'm going to. Oh, okay, Maya. Um, we're just going. To, we're going to talk about waste, uh, waste treatment and stuff in a minute. Okay, so we'll get into the the technical details of this. And Alicia, absolutely. But we can start as private citizens to do something. Absolutely, Alicia, um, because the, well, part of the. I think part of the thing is. Um, there is that question. What can we do? What can I do? Okay, what can you do? Um, and there can be a tendency to say, well, you know, I am one of seven billion. If I choose to to uh, to carry a uh, my stuff home in a plastic bag, what difference does that make? If I choose to take my stuff from the supermarket in a paper bag, which is recyclable, what difference does that make? It's one bag, which weighs 10 grams in a sea of, uh, of materials. Okay. Um, if we always think other, if we always think other, must do so. Yeah, that's exactly it. So the change has to start, uh, has to start with us okay and these are some of the things that we're going to we're going to cover now to, coming back to Maya's comment um, 
I'm going to go into a bit more detail about waste treatment. Um, I'm not going to throw chemistry and physics at you, don't worry, um, but hopefully this will, uh, will, will give you some sort of ideas. Um, it might be an idea, it might be an idea, uh, if you have the possibility of contacting your local uh, municipal uh, council waste treatment groups, because the, these are people who will uh, may be able to give you more information about how things happen, what things uh, happen, what things are done uh, in your local area, for example. So, okay, so um, we're going to look at um, we're going to look, look at three three topics here. We're going to look at um, waste streams. And this is given the acronym SSM, SMM, which is Sustainable Materials Management. Um, now, I'm not going, I, this is going to be very, very superficial. Um, but there is, uh, this can, this get, this gets, can get really technical. And it is the realm of very specialized sorts of engineers okay mm -hmm. so um, just to give you an idea that um, it's not it's not simply taking a piece of paper and throwing it over your shoulder and it magically gets turned into a new pla a new paper bag okay there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of technology in here there's a lot of science there's a lot of engineering a lot of chemistry a lot of physics okay um, so we're going to look at SMM we're going to look at um, the so-called hierarchy of waste, okay, and we're also going to look at um, waste treatment. So, in uh, how waste can be uh, can be treated in some cases, okay. So, um, the first thing that we need to be thinking about is the idea of streams. There, are. yeah, exactly. We must learn not to waste. Sorry, I keep looking at the chat just to see what. Uh, uh, what comments people are making. So the first, let's say, technical thing we need to be thinking about is we need to be thinking about uh, streams, waste streams. So um, in a way, uh, one way of, of thinking about this is that if you take, well, um, just thinking of a, um, a common everyday object, well, uh, if I said a, a mobile phone, that's a little bit a uh, little bit technological, but it will give the, give us the idea. If you think about uh, your mobile phone, it's quite clear that you have um, plastic, you have metal, um, and there's probably some other stuff in there that you probably don't recognise or can't remember what it is. Okay, but let's say it's mostly plastic and metal, um, but you have different types of plastic. And the plastic is coming from petrol. Um, the metal, well, you have different types of metal. You've got, in a mobile phone, you've got certainly got a lot of copper, you've got gold, you've got silver, and then you've got some other, other stuff which is a bit more exotic. You will have things like um, uh, neodymium, you will have things like europium, indium, stuff like this, which is a bit more... Bit, maybe not so familiar okay um, you've got glass you've got silica you've got lithium in the batteries okay so you've got all of these things now these things all started off life in the ground so the uh, the plastic came from petrol which came from the ground uh, the lithium came from uh, a mineral the gold was found in rocks uh, the silver was found in rocks, copper came from a mineral, and so all of these things, they came out of the ground as, let's say, particular streams of product, okay? They were pulled together into the the object itself, but now the object no longer has, uh, has value, so you are, let's say, now <laughs> separating those streams back out again. That's the idea. Okay, so that the the the, the concept of the waste stream is to uh, also to help us focus how to um, how to best organise the. I'm just looking at the comment here, and it's talking about recycling bins uh, in Turkey. Um, 
yeah, how best to organize at the very basic level, which is what do I do? Uh, how to organize the separation of these of these things, for example. And in fact, today there was I had another example. That today's been quite productive. For examples, I think. Um, in the staff room at the school, uh, there is a, uh, a a coffee machine, and finally, finally, after years, they are now using paper cups, which is a big step forward. However, you can't throw your paper cups in the bin with the paper, because yes, it, they are made of paper, but it's dirty paper, so they have to go in another bin. And so I was look, I was stood there again with four bins in front of me and two of the bins had paper cups in them so of course the, the message to me was well it's not it's not clear where where I should put this now this is a bit of a stupid a bit of a silly example but it sort of reflects a much wider uh, dilemma which is sometimes you look at the thing you think I don't know where to throw this Okay, we'll come to that in a minute though. Okay, so um, the idea is waste streams. Okay, so we're going to separate things. Uh, I'm going to go very quickly through the different types of waste streams that we typically talk about. Um, metals. Okay, so bits of metal. Well, it's, it's obvious. I mean, if you've got a bit of metal, you've got a motor or something, it's a, it's a piece of metal. And so you can, you can clearly deal with this, okay? Iron and steel, you can uh, separate them out. You can melt them down. You can re, uh, recycle them by um, uh, in the foundry, okay? Um, Non-ferrous metals, which are the non-magnetic or the non-iron uh, or nickel uh, metals, um, Again, this is mostly industrial stuff, uh, but aluminium, of course, is widely used in consumer uh, consumer goods. Uh, typically, um, we come across it in packaging, Coke cans, basically. Okay, uh, the the drinking drink cans, um, but it's 100% recyclable. Uh, why? Well, because you can recycle it uh, electrochemically. So this is. Um, uh, okay, yeah, so um, glass, okay, uh, it's mostly used in packaging, um, glass bottles, uh, I think this is Grosch, <laughs> which is a beer, okay, um, glass is a classic, uh, classic material for recycling, it's been recycled for a long time, I think, uh, I even I remember, uh, not when I was a kid kid, but when I was a bigger kid that um, there were glass bins and you could uh, recycle bottles um, remember though remember though that uh, some types of glass should never be put in the normal glass bins so for example light bulbs uh, um, anything that's semi ceramic should not go anywhere near a glass bin because this is the type of thing which will um, mean that that whole uh, set of glass has to be thrown away simply because it's, it adds contamination. Now, um, you may have, oops, sorry, we've got paper and cardboard. So it's estimated that over 50% of um, the paper industry actually uses, actually takes old paper and is reusing it, okay? Well, what is paper? Well, paper is uh, cellulose, it's cellulose fibers. And I think uh, over time, uh, particularly, I think particularly now with the fact that people really are waking up to there's too much plastic around. Um, paper is starting to come back into its own as a packaging material. Uh, and I think more, it's awful. You don't like, you don't like paper? <laughs> okay, no. Um, I think the, I think the, the thing is that um, people are getting really inventive. And I think, again, Part of it is the, the, the ability to share ideas, uh, the ability to um, use m really sort of modern, up-to-date techniques and technologies in ways which traditionally uh, were never thought of. 
who's really sort of breathed a lot of new life into uh, into something like uh, paper as a as a recyclable uh, material. So um, I'm just thinking uh, we we bought uh, we bought some uh, an electro uh, it was a it was a vacuum cleaner or something a, a few months ago and. I was well, yeah, the box is quite big, and I was expecting, oh, this is going to be full of polystyrene. Actually, to my surprise, it wasn't. There was a moulded paper uh, uh, holder for the for the for the vacuum cleaner inside. So, this is already uh, something which is um, uh, becoming much much more common now. Okay. Now, plastics. We know we know plastic and. We're going to talk about plastics in a, in a lot of detail uh, uh, in another session, because um, if you think about the fact that there are literally, well, thousands of them, different types for different reasons, and um, one of the things that you could ask is, well, why why are there so many different types of plastic? Well, because plastic in the end is convenient. You can't deny it. Plastic is convenient. Um, if you think about, uh, if you think about um, packaging for food or packaging for uh, for anything, um, the alternatives are paper, metal, aluminium or steel, some description, and glass. Well, it's quite clear that in some cases, uh, and in many cases, particularly where you're talking about moving things around, um, those materials are just not uh, just not accepted or just not a adapted to an efficient uh, to the efficiency of the movement. So you could say, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't use uh, we shouldn't use um, plastic bottles for bottled water. Fine, you can use glass bottles, um, but glass bottles weigh a lot more, and that means that the truck weighs a lot more, or you can't put so so much water on the truck. My question would be, why do you need to drink bottled water in the first place? But well, that's me being polemic. Um, but you see that the thing here is that uh, in many cases, um, plastic plastic uh, plastic materials. Uh, and in particular, things like the, the, like these guys, the so-called thermosets. Um, in many cases, these are replacing metal, which used to be used in small parts. Okay, uh, and in fact, in fact, sometimes I find myself taking something apart and say, "Oh, this used to be made of metal, but now it's made of plastic," because in many cases the plastic is actually has better performance okay so uh, for a whole series of reasons then you've got things like the elastomers which are the rubbery types of uh, plastics and then you've got the thermoplastics which are um, typically like your polystyrenes and stuff like this which are uh, being uh, molded for packaging but remember also um, we have clothes uh, you might have cotton jeans with 98% cotton, 2% elastan. Well, elastan is an elastomer. Okay, uh, okay, that 2% of elastan is not going to, let's say, destroy the world. But that's your pair of genes. How many pairs of genes are there? Okay, so the, this is where we get um, uh, this is where we get the uh, the numbers from. Okay, now I'm just coming back to the the chat for just to make a comment here. Uh, I think the problem is the industrial system of food production. Okay, um, Bruno, that that's fine. Uh, but my question to you is, how do you support uh, how do you support 67 million or 62 million people in Italy uh, with uh, an ag agrarian system? which is not semi-industrialized. That's the big problem, okay? Or that is one problem. We will look at the food system uh, in, another, in another session, but these are the things which, um, yeah, local production is fine, but uh, local production doesn't produce enough. 
Okay, so it's this is the this is this is the thing. Okay, so um, so where does plastic get used? Well, plastic is mostly used in packaging. Um, it's used in <coughs> so what? <coughs> it's used in building construction. Uh, it's used. It's used in the automotive industry. It's used, used in electronics, and then there are loads, literally thousands of speciality uh, and niche types of products. Okay, wood. Um, well, wood is fairly easy. Wood is wood, so you can recycle it. You can make new stuff, and if it's not too damaged, or you can burn it, and that's typically what happens. Now, electronic waste. Um, electronic waste is becoming. Um, it, I've made a note here that it's becoming increasingly recognised as a separate waste stream in and of its own right. I think at the moment, um, certainly here in this city, um, they ask you to take if you've got old printers and stuff that don't work, you take your electronics uh, stuff to a. A van which uh, which turns up in the the town square once a month or so, and basically they will take the uh, they will take they will gather the um, the electronic stuff uh, together. Okay, but what some people are working on, and they've been working on on it for quite a while, but it is a bit it is a, te a big technical problem. Um, if you just just I mean just look at this look at these. This this stuff here. This is a very very sophisticated piece of uh, piece of technology. You've got transistors, so you've got silicon, you've got uh, you've got doping agents like phosphorus, boron, all sorts of stuff in here. This thing is a is a is a is a chip. These are resistors. You've got uh, you've got a phenomenal amount of of stuff, but it's all mixed up and. One of the one of the things that uh, that people are trying to work on is how you can get the el these elements back from uh, such a mixture because this really is quite a it's quite a mixture. Okay, it, as a technological problem, it's um, it, it's a it's a big problem. But if you consider that it has been estimated that there is now more gold in a ton of iPhones. Than in a ton of the best ore, the best gold ore from the best gold mine. Okay, uh, so it gives you an idea as to what we're doing is we're concentrating these these uh, these resources, these elements into particular items, and so to throw them away is just uh, it's just well, it's certainly not sustainable. Okay. Um, the other point here is that, of course, if you just look around you, um, electronics are everywhere. Okay, <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for uh, electronics, which is good. It's a good thing, um, but quite often the uh, the electronics, the components, are coming from uh, places in the world where the um, maybe you have uh, political instability I'm thinking about uh, the Congo for example uh, you'll have heard of uh, people uh, talking about blood diamonds I think there was even a film a few years ago um, a lot of that is not diamonds for making rings or wedding rings or engagement rings it's actually industrial diamonds um, but they're just a, they're just another example. Uh, you have the uh, um, uh, you have the places like the Congo, the, Demo, uh, the DRC, where you have high concentrations of cobalt, um, tantalum, uh, these types of minerals, which are extremely um, let's say they're, they're extremely spread out, um, but they the more concentrated there, but it's a, it's a place which is extremely in, in, unstable. Okay, problem is a lot of people. Are, they are users, not keep. Uh, yeah, okay. No, I think I think you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, and they think it won't touch them. Well, I think this is something which um, uh, we can we could talk about that for a long time, whether it's denial or whether it's uh, something that people just don't think about. But anyway. 
coming back to coming back to, back to the waste um, rubber waste okay um, now tires uh, tires are not just rubber there there's, there's actually a whole pile of stuff in them um, and rubber and tires can be a really uh, real pain to get rid of um, you can uh, reuse them to some extent you can retread them you can um, uh, you can use them for energy recovery, so that's in, in incineration. Uh, you can also use them um, as a as an input for making flooring and roofing materials, for example, or as foundations for roads and railways. Because this is the sort of stuff which is um, this is actually very very difficult to deal with. It's it's very difficult to deal with um, as a um, uh, as a as a as a material because it's it's pretty stable and it's uh, pretty difficult to uh, to turn into other things. Okay, textile waste about 75% of discarded textiles in the EU, in the EU that's our area um, either end up in landfill or are burned. Um, the 25% is recycled in some way. Okay. Bio waste. Okay, so most of this is um, from household sources, and again, I don't know around the table here. Um, there may be some people who are in a place where um, the bio waste is collected. Um, we are in in our part of the city. Uh, in other parts of the city, it's not so it's not so well organised. I think um, now again. Just thinking from our our own personal experience, um, we have what's called door to door collection. What that means is that on Monday and I think it's Thursday, we have to take the wa the bio waste bin out. Okay. Um, whereas on Tuesdays it's plastic and Wednesdays it's mixed and uh, and Friday it's paper. Okay. Um, at the beginning, I have to say that we were rather we were rather let's say. Um, annoyed about it because we were saying, well look, this was maybe five, ten years ago. Why do we have to do this? But the next the next sort of uh, section of the city just down the road, they don't ha they don't have to they can throw away what they like when they like, okay? Yeah. So but I think now I think we've got used to the idea of we just you you just do it. It's part of the part of the routine. But the thing here is that there's a lot of household waste is uh, is biodegradable um, and so if you uh, consider uh, household waste green waste and then there's of course there's the the industrial waste from food processing but you do have to remember that the food processing industry where it can it doesn't waste anything okay now I'm not going to say any more than that <laughs> okay it's just that um, as an industry, they are. Uh, it's a, it's um, it's very much focused on not wasting stuff because where they can get money for for anything, they will. Okay. Um, so, how about this figure here? 1.3 billion tons of food, edible food, is wasted each year. Okay. That's one third of all food produced. Now that can be wasted at different points in the process. This is from the FAO, the um, FAO, uh, which I can never remember what it is in uh, in English, but I'll, I'll look at it, look it up later. It's the uh, United Nations. Oh, it was. It's the United Nations thing which deals with agriculture. Okay, so that's just given us an idea of different different streams. Okay, so. What we have to do when we're thinking about um, when we're thinking about this this waste, we have to organise our thinking in terms of like a pyramid a hierarchy. Okay, so this is what we're going to uh, we're going to look at, um, and the hierarchy is based or based around what what do we do what do we do with these uh, with this waste? How do we manage it? Okay, so we've got. Um, the idea of sustainable material materials management (SMM). Okay, um, this is a sort of uh, a sort of a fairly consolidated 
um, a very consolidated approach. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. F Food and Ogre Agriculture Organization, thank you, Agnese. Um, because I, I have a terrible memory and it's just getting worse. So, um, so there's a sort of like a, a more or less a consolidated uh, approach to, to waste management, which is used uh, generally across the world with sort of local variations according to, uh, according to what you have available and according to the sorts of things you're dealing with. So um, it's a more systemic approach uh, and the idea is to productively use and reuse materials over their life cycles, okay? Um, and if you like, well, you can look at it as a sort of a technical economic uh, pyramid or hierarchy, which um, helps you structure not just what you do with the waste as an individual uh, or as a, as a co uh, community, um, uh, but also how to uh, structure your infrastructure, what you put in place in order to deal with this. So we've got this, um, this hierarchy of management, which we start with reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, if you can't recycle, uh, you recover the energy. If you can't recover the energy, you put it in the ground. Okay, so of course, as you come down here, as you come down this pyramid, you get into the least favorable options. So the idea is not that this is the biggest part of the pyramid, but actually you want this to be the smallest part of the pyramid possible. So if like, if anything, I should invert this triangle. Um, the point is that this is, this is bad. Okay. We don't want this and we want to avoid this. Okay. So, um, I've sort of sort of turned this around uh, thinking about the personal hierarchy of waste management. So um, usually we think about this way, the waste cycle uh, as starting with um, reducing, maybe reusing, um, and then recycling. Okay, so this is we're sort of becoming quite automatic in this. Um, uh, there may be uh, there may be more or less attention to reducing, or there may be more or less attention to attention to reusing. Um, sewing machines can be very useful, for example. Okay, um, but as a private citizen, I think it's fair to say that the exact details of the recycling, the energy recovery, and it eventually ending up in the land. Um, it's not really sort of our, uh, we don't really sort of give it, give too much attention to it because it's, it's really entering into the, the, the technical, highly technical aspects of the, of the thing. Um, although, as I said here, you may, you may feel uncomfortable about it and, uh, and I think we, right, quite rightly, we should. Um, but we have this, we have this idea that uh, that the details are, are disim uh, the details are somebody else's business, but we also have to remember, though, that because of the highly technical nature of some of this stuff, this is where uh, we come to the debate about um, the expert or the experts versus people who are non-experts. Okay, and um, Quite often you have discordant voices amongst experts because you have people pushing different uh, different approaches, different agendas. And for the person who is outside of all of this and who doesn't have a technical training such that they can see, let's say, see through the, the different arguments, um, it can be very confusing. and possibly even disempowering because you disengage it, it, there's a tendency to disengage or fossilize in a particular an entrenched position which leads nowhere okay so i think uh i think one of the things here is and i, I recognize this that um will you see this in the debates around the incinerators for example um and of course, no one really wants to be living next to a, a, a chimney which is belching out uh, uh, belching out waste fumes. However, we're in the 21st century, and the chimney shouldn't be belching out waste fumes. It would have done that 
50 or 60 years ago, but these days there's no excuse for this. And in fact, where, we, where you look at countries where waste incineration is part of energy recovery, um, and it's been developed uh, on semi-local basis, um, the, uh, the conditions are very, very different to how things were done in the past. Okay, so um, coming a little bit more to uh, the five R's. Now, um, if we think about personal waste management, uh, quite often we seem to really, really focus on recycling. Uh, so whether that's sort of making sure that we separate stuff and it goes in the right bin, okay, is my cup going into the right paper bin, for example, okay. Uh, so of course there are uh, the, there are these others which come before it: reduce, reuse, repurpose. These are sort of very, very similar, but um, uh, quite clearly they're related. So, but there is a first R, and that is refuse. Um, and there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a play on words here, um, because this is um, where you refuse to make refuse. <laughs> okay, so you refuse to make refuse, um, and it, it's clear that this is the obvious. Uh, this is uh, an obvious way of really cutting down on waste, which is if you say no to start off with. Um, now. Okay, this is not saying that we all have to become hermits and go and live on tops of uh, marble pillars in in the Cappadocian desert. Um, but we can be thinking about, for example, single-use plastics uh, or wasteful uh, and uh, wasteful things which are uh, non-recyclable, throw away non-recyclable products, okay? So this is about making an informed choice. This is maybe, uh, it might mean, it might mean that you decide to go and shop in a different place because they have that particular type of, uh, that particular brand or that particular thing which you know uh, is, is better in terms of waste management, okay? So, um, Okay, so if you don't produce it, you don't. Uh, okay, so some facts: um, baby, babies' nappies, uh, diapers, if you want, if you're feeling American. Uh, 3.6 million tons—that's a lot of nappies uh, per year. Okay, 71 billion dollar industry in uh, in the world. Okay, nappies take about 500 years to dispose of, to decompose. 500 years. That's a lot. So the archaeologists in the future are going to be in for some quite nasty surprises, I think. Um, around uh, two year, first two years of life, around 6,000 nappies are used. Um, and this is a, the, now this data is for the US. 95% uh, of mothers in the US uh, use only disposable nappies. I remember many many years ago uh, I spent some time in Canada and the uh, uh, in the place where we were there was uh, a service for um, uh, there was a service for nappy washing uh, so you know this was I mean this was and this was back in the 90s so you know they, they were quite uh, um, of course it's all a little bit ick it's a little bit ick but as a let's say as a um, uh, as a, a sustainable eco sustainable thing uh, the the hospital gave uh, a certain number of um, uh, reusable washable nappies and they would be collected over the course of uh, over the course of uh, the week and they could be uh, recycled and uh, reused washed and reused and of course since it was being organized by a health authority these things were being sterilized and what have you just as as you you would uh, uh, properly but of course people used to do this at home yeah i mean you know, uh, disposable nappies weren't always uh, weren't always available. 
What about these guys? Uh, disposable razors. Now I know there's a lot of ladies on the on the call today, so uh, maybe this is not quite so much uh, uh, such a problem, unless of course you're talking about legs. Um, but these things are terrible. Uh, I mean, I can see, I can see at least three. Di not just be not because of the colours, but because of the the uh, the types of, of things that they are. I can see at least three, di three different types of plastic here. Uh, this the handle is nice and soft. Yeah, it, it's uh, it gives you it's tactile. It's a nice uh, nice sensation. This is obviously a bit more strong. It's a bit so more solid. Okay, this is a different type of polymer. And then you've got the black uh, bits which are holding the blades and which are tougher still. Okay, but they're still plastic. So also how the hell do you pull something like this apart? You can't. It's, uh, they are, they're, they're incredibly complex pieces of, uh, pieces of assembly, if you like, okay? So, um, again, 2 billion, 2,000 million disposable razors, and that's more than, uh, in the US alone. Um, you can't recycle them. Uh, they're dangerous to sort because even if you can break them, you've got you've got razor blades in here, and some of these have four or five razor blades. So you know this is stuff which you really uh, it's, this is this stuff is bad karma, okay? And of course, well, we'll talk about micro microplastics at another uh, another another juncture, another point. Okay, so. Um, cell phones, okay, so uh, talked about, we sort of mentioned uh, mentioned the idea of uh, metals and plastics and this combination of stuff and then you've got resources for transportation and packaging and what have you. Um, I, I, I find this number just incredible. 400,000 mobile phones a day. Okay, that, 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 I mean, but even, even if it were 100,000 mobile phones a day, that is a ridiculous amount of phones which are being thrown away, but it's not, it's much, much bigger. Okay, so this is, uh, and this is 2014 data because I couldn't find anything more recent. Uh, and this is the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, uh, estimating more than 150 million phones a year in America okay yeah right okay so so again I think you know you, you the questions that we start to ask ourselves well hold on why why is it why is this uh, why is it why is it like this well uh, you think about your um, the pressure to uh, update uh, you may not feel the personal pressure to update, but at some point your phone doesn't work quite as well as it used to. Um, maybe it's getting a bit slow. The latest operating system has just basically eaten all of your RAM and you, 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 you can't do anything. And so at this point you just have a sort of a, a half a half brick and so you say okay well I'll get a new I'll have to get a new one this is not it's not working anymore okay um, now I know that uh, one of the other aspects of this has been um, the so-called right to repair which uh, in some cases and in particular uh, the company which has the, the the fruit label but they don't sell fruit um, were not, have been notorious for this in creating a sealed uh, ecosystem, uh, including um, including repair, and so uh, it's it was it, it was very difficult, very expensive for people to um, to repair and keep uh, and and keep up to date their particular uh, their particular device. Now. There are a whole. I think there are a whole set of problems around these things because one could say, well, why don't we just? Why why can't you just use a, an old phone? Well, you can. Okay, if you want a smartphone, if you want, if you just want a telephone, get yourself an, an old Nokia. <laughs> you know, one of those which are just virtually indestructible. Um, they still work. They're phones. 
But the thing is, nowadays we no longer we no longer use these things just as telephones. If you think about it, you you don't just call people; you send people messages, which is fine. You could sort of do that on a Nokia. It's called an SMS, yeah. Um, but you look up stuff on the internet. Yeah, you know, I've got to find this on Wikipedia, and I can find the answer to that. And, and you're doing all sorts of stuff. You're taking photographs, and this is. Um, I think this is this is something which uh, we have to uh, you know we have to sort of put into the equation. So there's been an evolution of the, the technologies, but maybe things are starting to get uh, starting to even out now as people have sort of um, reached the maximum potential of these things, uh, at least for the moment. Um, but of course, I think part of the uh, part of the thing um, part of the thing with these with these phones, I think, is that um, uh, there was there's also the fact that the operating systems are extremely fluid; they're extremely vulnerable, and so there's constant need for updating. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Maria is just making a, Maria Pia is just making a comment here. Um, so as the as the network upgrades from um, uh, from three G to four G to five G, your maybe your Nokia old Nokia is going to work not going to work anymore. Having said that, I seem to remember reading last year that uh, they've actually re relaunched it, and it. It, the newer version should take uh, should go for four, should go 4G 5G um, because it as a as a design as a as an object it's uh, extremely useful and you know one charge ah, ten days <laughs> you know if you if you get that you, you're lucky if you get a day on a smartphone these days but anyway okay so um, so the whole thing here is this idea of electronic. Uh, he bought it last year. Okay, well maybe. Uh, well, if it's an old one, hold on. No, okay, that's a conversation for another time, Maria Pierre. Okay, so food waste. Um, now, uh, food waste is a big, 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 big problem, and it's not just the stuff that you find at the back of your fridge, which you forgot about, and everybody does it. Um, we get food waste at all points in the food production uh, in the food production cycle. Um, so you have waste at the level of the the collection of the of the materials uh, during storage. So uh, you may lose you may lose um, food to uh, bad storage conditions. Which could uh, lead to infestations, rodents, that type of thing, but also um, uh, stuff going bad. Um, you get waste during processing, uh, and in order for food to be um, uh, to be, let's say, available for uh, for distribution, a certain excuse me, a certain amount of processing needs to be. Uh, needs to be done. You get waste during distribution. You get waste during the consumption. Uh, you know, maybe you don't finish all of the stuff. Um, so, you know, uh, and stuff can also uh, have a uh, defined, um, a defined uh, shelf life. Uh, it will last a certain amount of time, uh, beyond which um, it will. Uh, it's, it will perish. Okay, so food waste is uh, covers the whole. Let's say the whole whole of the supply chain, from growing to um, to consumption. Um, so, what can we do about this? Well, um, I'm just reading some of the comments here, and I think people you know, people have been using the word worrisome, terrifying, and yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's not an easy. It's not an easy thing to reconcile because it, it's um, uh, this waste stuff. Uh, it's enough to sort of really quite depress you, I think. Um, but if we just get depressed about it, we're going to be inactive. We have to turn that into that that 
sort of passive acceptance into something which is a bit more uh, a bit more active um, so first thing is this idea of being a thoughtful consumer so um, we get what we want what we need um, in the right amount okay so I'm thinking ju just thinking about this, the, the stupid idea of the razors now um, Okay, I've got a beard, but I shave this bit every so often. And um, I was thinking a few years ago, I thought, well, I'll get a, an electric razor. Yeah, because uh, you you buy it once, but it's the sort of thing that you keep for like 20, 25 years. So uh, it's something which is certainly uh, more sustainable. Um, however, every so often, you need, a, you need a wet shave. Yeah, but you it's easier it's just easier to get the get the razors from the supermarket rather than the razor blades and the razor blade holder and it all gets a bit fiddly and you end up with cuts on your fingers and it gets a bit uh, it gets a bit uh, a bit messy let's say um, but yes these are things which you which you can think about uh, about um, maybe changing your habits a little bit okay reducing the amount that you you buy can help reduce the amount of stuff which needs to be sorted because that's one of the big big problems is this idea of organizing the waste streams okay um it's more sustainable of course well yeah uh but this is the maria pia it's not a thousand watts <laughs> It's it's something like it's something like 20 watts, maybe once uh, once every two weeks or so, because it's a rechargeable one. Okay, um, so uh, but this this is an interesting an interesting point though, uh, and this is something that maybe we can uh, we can talk about at some point, which is um, so you're going to make a choice, uh, but you can't have a choice a choice which is zero. Because every choice you make, uh, whether it's the plastics, the, the plastic and the metal that have gone into making the the, ra the electric razor, and the uh, and the the electricity that it's consuming, or whether it's the the plastic uh, and the metals which are used in the the throwaway razors. Okay, so. Uh, what do I do? I say, well, okay, 25 years of one compared to 25 years of the other. Um, yes, it's clear that there is still a, uh, uh, a use of resources, but um, uh, you know, you have uh, you have the uh, you have a you have a balance. You have a trade-off. It can't be zero. Otherwise, I could just say, oh, I'll just grow a Karl Marx beard, um, and then my wife will say something else to me. <laughs> so, so the thing the thing here is that uh, any choice you make will have uh, any choice we ma you make will have uh, sort of uh, let's say an impact of some description. Um, Okay, so you can you can maybe try to be a little bit more informed, a bit more thoughtful about uh, about the stuff that you you're you're buying, you're consuming, uh, or we, I should say, not you, because it's not me lecturing you guys to go and go out and do this stuff. Okay, but we just remember that the the the, the impact of this is that you will reduce the burden on the, the 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 waste sorting system okay so and that will in its turn make the system more efficient and that in its turn will help the will help the let's say the environment in its uh, um, uh, eventually in its uh, uh, it, as we as we go forward okay what else can you do? You can also advocate for changes. So, for example, the laws in plastic bags. Um, uh, this is, I think, this is something which has definitely changed over the last five years or so. Uh, I think it was f about four or five years ago in Italy when um, the idea of, of uh, the single-use plastic bags were um, were um, uh, outlawed. Okay, and um, 
So uh, we had this idea of uh, we have this idea of you, you have bio bags or whatever which are absolutely useless. Bioplastic is <laughs> it's a ter it's terrible stuff because from a technical point of view it's just not it, it's never strong enough. And of course, everybody has the experience of you put in uh, you put in a square box and it tears the bag and it's um, it's clear. You just carry, you just take uh, either one of those uh, big robust uh, plastic bags that you use a million times, or you use a cotton bag or a rucksack or something. Okay, um, but you can also change. For, you can also campaign for things like, for example, the right to repair. Now, this might sound like a, a rather odd thing, but what this is about is really about pressuring manufacturers to make items which are um, more easily repaired at a local level okay like things were once upon a time uh, now of course modern equip modern uh, modern goods modern white goods in particular household electro electro domestic goods um, can be very very sophisticated and uh, it, they can also be extremely expensive to uh, to replace, and they can be even more expensive to repair. Uh, in some cases, it's because of the way these things are made. But that's exactly the that's exactly the thing. Maybe there is a in fact there is a lot of room for making things in such a way that um, you can uh, they're more modular. So if a piece, so for example, typically the electronics break at some point, but the rest of the structure is fine. Why do I have to throw away a perfectly good washing machine motor and a perfectly good uh, basket when it's the electronic circuit which has failed? Okay, so these are things which uh, which people. Um, which people are uh, are looking at um, uh, changing uh, changing attitudes and changing also changing laws as well. And in fact, at the, at the European level, the level of the EU, there is um, there are um, uh, there's legislation going through the European Parliament around uh, based around the uh, um, giving consumers the right to be able to take your telephone to the local uh, the local repair guy who uh, is not going to void your warranty by opening the phone and doing something stupid inside it just to fix it so these are things which uh, which can which we can uh, activities which we can engage in so thinking about it and advocating okay so uh, also shopping for quality um, for example, once upon a time uh, you bought a pair of shoes and maybe those shoes lasted you for 10 or 12, 15 years <laughs> because they were made in such a way that they, they would last that, that long. So, of course, one of the, one of the things here is that um, uh, people always look for, let's say, the best, uh, the best deal. Uh, getting stuff as cheap as possible, and everybody does it, of course, because money is what it is, and you have to you have to be careful with it. Um, but quite often there is a there's a lot of let's say false economy around, and the idea of uh, looking for something which is going to uh, which is going to last is certainly good. Buying local, um, you may be lucky uh, to have a farmer's market nearby. Or a place where you can get local produce. Now, um, linked to this is the second one, which is about eating in season. Um, now, I, we have a, a farmers market just down. Well, a farmers market is uh, just down the road. Uh, it's a place which, uh, and this is interesting, an interesting example because they've teamed up with a local winery, and they use a part of their um, their premises, and they're open so that it's not a market like once a week. It's a place which is open uh, all day, uh, every day um, during the summer or from May. Through, from March through to through to October, um, but of course I wouldn't expect to find bananas there. Well, 
<laughs> bananas don't grow here. <laughs> okay. Uh, however, um, as the seasons change, this can also be something which is, uh, I think, which is, uh, which is nice because it's a, um, it's a part of the the cycle of the uh, of time, if you like. Okay, so uh, single-use products, um, products with the unnecessary packaging. Have you ever refused to take a bag in your shop? No, it's okay. I'll just put it in my rucksack. That's fine. Um, things that you can fix, things that you can repair, um, buying stuff second hand, uh, that might be perfectly acceptable according to what you are, uh, according to what you are, uh, what you're looking for. So for example, um, I tend to, uh, my computers, I tend to look for uh, old business computers because they're extremely robust. So I have a tendency to drop things, okay? Uh, so I want something which is going to, which is going to, uh, which is going to last. Um, reconditioned, so why, why not? Uh, they're perfectly, uh, perfectly okay. Um, considering uh, we can consider the design, and uh, now this is a bit more, let's say, a bit more for the the people who are involved in uh, in making these things. But and I think again, this is starting to become more and more uh, uh, prevalent. Which there is, there is a certain pressure on manufacturers to have things which are recyclable or which are sustainable. So the idea of uh, making something which is designed to be recycled or which is designed to be reused, um, this is becoming uh, very uh, much more, much more common. Um, I'm thinking of a there's a, a Dutch company. Which makes uh, it makes a telephone. It makes a, a, a type of smartphone which costs more than the, the the normal smartphone, but it's not that much more. But what they've done is they've made the whole thing uh, modular. So if you want to upgrade a piece of your phone, you just swap the module and you send the old one back, and they send you the new one. Okay, so you've got these uh, these types of uh, design. This type of design thinking is starting to become um, become present. Okay, so um, what stops us? So, from the point of view of the institutional actor, so that's the your your uh, your governments or your um, uh, your, your local uh, councils and what have you, um, there are some systemic costs associated with, uh, with waste uh, management and um, part of this can be, uh, part of these costs are sort of, let's say, associated with just basically getting data around the, uh, um, uh, around the, the phenomenon, but in general, the costs associated with, uh, let's say, the systemic part um, are a lot lower than actually having to deal with the waste itself. So the idea of engaging in a campaign of education to raise awareness, advocating the use of uh, uh, the waste bins in the proper way, for example, uh, it's, this is always going to be a lot less costly uh, with a lot lower cost compared to uh, not doing it and dealing with the consequences okay okay so um, one good way of, uh, of uh, dealing with waste is to reuse things now some things you can reuse some things you can't um, some things that you can some things you can reuse exactly as they were uh, so for example the idea of collecting uh, collecting uh, toner cartridges for uh, for laser printers for example if you look at a toner cartridge they're actually quite sophisticated pieces of uh, technology you've got uh, uh, it's not just a, co a simple container with a uh, with a with a hole where you put the stuff uh, you've got uh, you've got rubber you've got metal you've got plastic and it's all together in a particular shape and it fits in and there's a circuit and uh, pretty sophisticated so to throw something like that in the waste is really quite uh, really quite uh, appalling um, 
these are now becoming much easier to, to recycle. Okay. Um, other things you can actually use for completely different, uh, completely different purposes. I do think there is a limit to how many of these cans you can actually stick on your front wall, though. Uh, <laughs> I mean, once you've done it, once you've done it like a hundred times, you will, uh, you won't have any more space. Okay. Okay. So li lascia uno spazio per le domande. Grazie. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay, right, so um, I'm just going to have a look, I just want to have a look at one more thing. Okay, no, this is fine. I'm going to, I'll stop here. This is fine. So, um, okay, so the message is that you can unmute yourselves, but don't shout at once. I think schools are making a great job in this way, introducing and reusing the most, most of the activities they propose at least to the rinse. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, guys. If you're going to if you if you're going to ask a, a question, um, uh, if you're going to unmute yourself, can you uh, just sort of ask a question to me rather than? Um, okay. Uh, okay. Gordon, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, can you stop sharing your screen so you can yeah, have a, okay. we can have all the participants in a Okay, stop screen sharing. It may uh echo. Okay. Okay, now let me put the gallery view. And if you want to make a question, just you can turn on your microphone or you can just write it down in the chat. And uh, now it's time for questions. Maria Pia. It's lovely to see you here anyway. <laughs> okay. It's your turn. I know it, it was, it's getting more and more interesting because uh, uh, Gordon, uh, we have the privilege to have uh, such a friend here in Verona and uh, not only because he's a mother tongue but because he's very much interested to the topic and mm. so he's collecting a lot of very useful information for our network and for our daily life, because all of us are very much aware of what is going to be in the future concerning the environment, we are going to self suicide. I don't yeah, know. I, th I think I think one of the things with this uh, with this this whole this whole topic is that it, it it would be very very easy to just give up. Yeah. It would be very, very easy to just say oh, it's too big, it's too much, and we can't do anything. And that is the absolute last message that you, that we need to transmit to young people. Uh, now, you know, uh, in a way, we've sort of uh, well, we've created this mess, but our our parents have also created have created this mess, if you like. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's it's not a question of blame, but it's a question of getting uh, getting let's say attitudes changed across all generations, not just you know we can't just say we can't just say oh young people, it's your it's your problem. You solve it, and then when they say, "But we can't because you are stopping us," uh, we can't. Yeah, you know, we we can't then say, "Ah, oh, but you know, you guys are useless." It, it can't be like that. So this is exactly why the commission has met on us, supporting such a uh, incredible project to create a movement uh, to focus on plastic, not only on plastic, on all the issues that you mentioned today. <laughs> And in order to deliver it to the future citizens, I mean, in our daily work with uh, kids, and having, you know, there are, we notice already there are a lot of organizations, associations, and we are trying to gather all of them around this project mm. in order that to reinforce this movement and make it very effective. Because in everyday life, if we just change our habits, choosing something which is not, it's not made of petrol or totally reusable or recyclable, that's great. We really can make the difference together. So please, make questions. It's your turn now. <laughs> oh, silently night. <laughs> 
Now, nobody cares. I'm not an English mother tongue, me either, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm, ju I'm just going to make a comment about uh, some things that Maria Pierce put on the, uh, on the chat here. So she, talk, she says a different lifestyle sometimes might help share cars, limit the number of goods we buy, we've got dozens of clothes now, wardrobes we don't use, uh, net zero, it's to say you compensate your bad impact on earth with a positive impact, so plant trees and stuff. Yeah, so for example, lifestyle, uh, you know, the, the, the obvious, uh, an obvious one is you get a bike, uh, try not to use the car, try to keep the car in the garage a little bit longer. Um, what could hap what would hap what would help you keep the car in the garage more uh, maybe an insurance policy which allowed you to say today I'm not driving my car my car staying in the garage so I get a reduction for today I don't pay the insurance on it in now that in itself sounds a little bit complicated but really these days uh, with the with QR codes and you know cameras that you just point you, you point your camera at something and you pay for something. It, this, these sorts of things must be within our within our reach. Uh, we're going to organize some parallel meetings with all the followers of this training course because there are a lot of researches how to substitute plastic with eco-compatible elements and material cord, for example, and, uh, but the main problem that I, uh, one of the ma main problems that we are dealing with is what I'm, I sent the link at the beginning is about the tires under, at the bottom of the ocean, of the mm -hmm. sea, you don't see them, and, and they are responsible for a lot of things. We continue to use tires made of petrol. And 60% of them, we breathe them, we eat them, we drink them. And the rest goes down to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I sent it, I posted to you some pictures in the chat at the okay. beginning. Okay, uh, Stefan, can I just make a comment? Uh, yeah. Irina, uh, I can't Great. see Irina here, but uh, she just put a, a, a nice comment on the chat. And she said that she sort of, uh, some things are obvious, but knowing how we should uh, behave, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is fine. Hi, Irina. Um, but it's the last, last one. Usually recycled things cost more. Okay. So we come back to the ec economics of the thing. And as a per, uh, at a personal level, uh, are you willing to pay 5%, 10%? 20% more because you know that, that that article, that object, that thing is, re, uh, is sustainable, okay? Now that's one thing if you have the choice, but what if you can't? And many people can't. Um, yeah? So I think that's a really, I think that's a really good, uh, a really good point. Uh, um, there is, there are also points about Recycling, but we'll come to that when we when we get uh, when we get to the the recycling part next time. I think this was uh, must start must start. Yes, absolutely was change the school's curriculum. Okay, uh, import. Okay, uh, yeah. Actually, can I? Oh, there's, there's the chat's running away. So Dilek, um, interesting comment here because I think it's interesting you said we should give importance to sustainable environmental environmental education in every class not just in social studies or science okay well in, yeah exactly so since we're talking about um, we're talking about citizens of the future uh, and citizenship of, of, of the world of the future uh, I think it's I think it's it's absolutely clear that this cannot be left to a technical discussion of carbon dioxide in the science curriculum, okay, or maybe an economic analysis of the impact of recycling in the uh, in the social sciences curriculum, okay. It's quite clear that this is something which is it's much much broader than that. What what can we do now to be part of this without 
uh, without plastic schools group plastic schools group okay it all starts with the family okay now this is the topic of the project we will yeah. are creating a movement all over the world mm -hmm. to, you know able to reduce the plastic starting in school and going into the family yeah. well yeah. you'll have a lot of information about it and we are going to gather and discuss together about it yeah. it's a special topic but I don't want to, to spoil your, to steal time for your intervention, sorry. No, 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 it's, no, 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 it's, it's okay. It, it's just, it's just this, uh, this idea, it starts with the family, it starts with the person, with the individual, but of course in a family you have individuals who are too small to understand or to appreciate because the kids, kids don't know the science, they, you can't talk technical stuff with the kids. Um, the thing is, it's this idea of it's the it, these behaviours become habit, and of course children learn from people around them because we are social apes, yeah. Uh, and so this this idea of um, becoming responsible is something which is learned. It starts in the family, but it's also it's it's the school plays an import a vitally important role because for some children, maybe the family isn't able to provide that uh, that type of let's say thinking, okay, for whatever reason. Um, I'm pretty sure authorities need to take a part of the burden. Absolutely, okay. So there's also uh, the people who we elect. Yeah, the people who we put into positions of power, okay, and I won't mention Scott Morrison in Australia, um, okay, active citizenship, well this is part of uh, the idea of um, taking responsibility, yeah. No, it's uh, the, the more the more sort of I I sort of dig around this stuff, the more uh, it, it's clear that this is more than just a, it's more than just a technical fix because there is no tech. There, tech technology is only a, a small part of it. It's actually about people and about how people behave. Okay, now there's a few more comments coming up here. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so that's the da. Are we really but <laughs> are we really the best model for our students? That's uh that's a uh Professor the Autocritica uh Autoreflexione. Okay, so it's yeah but yeah, it's uh, without being uh, without trying to be sort of or appear facetious about this, no. Um we do have to examine. We do have to examine ourselves. Okay, Kemal. Uh, if I can, I'm not going to give you a technical answer to this because we're going to talk about this in another session. Okay. Um, this is just. I'll just give you the. Uh, just give you the thing is that this is an example where, in order to really understand, let's say, the whole thing about biodegradable, recyclable plastics you really have to get into the details of it it's like you have to get down into the into the science of it and it's at that point that you realize that everything well some things are not quite what they seem okay so but we will discuss that yeah okay Stefano uh, oh, time's, uh, over. time's over oh, scusa I'm sorry I